how much power this summer, June, July and August. Well, welcome. I will give you the numbers that my system here has produced and uh, you have to keep in mind that those panels behind me here they are only connected to the grid so they will not have anything to do with those numbers here. Just have that in your mind. Uh, so the rest of the system they are rated uh, the panels they are rated to 11.25 kWp and I was able to produce 1,652 kilowatt hours in June and I charged my battery with 574 kilowatt hours of them and then I consumed 1,159 kilowatt hours. I then also exported 475 kilowatt hours and I imported 9.6 kilowatt hours. I don't really know why I did some import there but I guess that uh, I have done it <laughs> because the numbers are there but anyhow maybe it's due to some leak in the one cur current sensor or something or maybe it was a day with uh, a very low or high minus price on the energy then I also used to go on grid if we have a dip in the energy price there. So that's the number for June in July I was only receiving or producing 1521 kilowatt hours and I charged my battery with 586 kilowatt hours and I consumed 1161 kilowatt hours. I exported 339 of those kilowatt hours that I was producing and then I also imported 21 kilowatt hours and I did that because I was on my way with my family and my wife was insisting to take one of uh, our over cars so she could have one car with her and I had to charge that before we drive and uh, yeah my battery to my house was pretty empty so I charged her car with 21.2 kilowatt hours that day and then we come to August I produced 1460 kilowatt hours, I charged my battery with 544 kilowatt hours and I consumed 1005 kilowatt hours. I exported 461 kilowatt hours and I then imported 108, no 100.8 kilowatt hours and uh, what the heck happened? Well we had a big and pretty long dip in the energy prices. So I charged my battery, I charged my three electric cars. Well, one is a plug-in hybrid there, so it's only, it's only able to take around eight kilowatt hours. But I have my Volkswagen Golf City Strummer uh, with a total capacity at 55 kilowatt hours. And I have my small Volkswagen E-Up uh, that can take uh, a little over 30 kilowatt hours. And of course, my house battery uh, will be able to take around uh, 45 to 50 kilowatt hours when I am cycling it. It will hold 62 kilowatt hours, but I will not charge it up to 100% and I will not take it down to 0%. Those days when I really would like to charge my battery up, I actually used to adjust the settings in the inverter so I can charge it a little harder just to get that good feeling when the energy prices are negative. You probably probably know what I mean. <laughs> so just for fun. Uh, anyhow, that's why I bought so many kilowatt hours in August. It's not necessary at all. And uh, yeah, my inverter has been standing in self-use the most of the time here. And what that means is that it will first of all charge my battery until it's full. And after that, it will then start to export the excessive amount of power that my panels are producing. So it's a really good uh, inverter. I am really happy with it. I mean, the most of the inverters are doing this, so it's not special at all. But uh, I remember when I had that uh, off-grid old GrowWatt inverter, it was pretty irritating when I was standing there with a fully charged battery and it was only 12 o'clock in the middle of the day and the sun was just, it was a perfect day. The sun was shining 
and my inverter just backed off and just was producing that energy that my house was needed at that given moment. So this is a much better deal, even if we now have some negative prices, uh, it's still good to sell because we have this 60 euro in tax relief. And what that means is that if I now buy, let's say, 1000 kilowatt hours and then I sell one or export 1000 kilowatt hours, I will then have 60 euro per kilowatt hour back in tax relief. But if I now produce 1500 kilowatt hours and still just import 1000 kilowatt hours, I still will just have those 60 euro for 1000 kilowatt hours that I have sold. So therefore it can sometimes be really good to buy some energy when the energy prices are really low or at least when it is on the minus side. I normally don't bother to go off my battery nowadays when we have this pretty much the same energy prices during the night and day. The last year I was charging my battery the cheapest hour from the grid and then throw that out to the grid again. The automation in Home Assistant took care of that mostly and then just throw out that energy to the grid during those most expensive hours. So now this summer I have not done that at all, not even the spring. I think I did some selling in uh, Ju January, but I think that that was actually the only month that I was doing it. And as you can see, we have some difference here in battery input and battery output, by the way. And I plan to do a video about that because there will always be some energy losses. Maybe not so much in the battery itself, but in the cables between the inverter and the battery and then, of course, in the inverter itself. So I plan to do a video about that. So don't forget to subscribe now, guys, if you are new to my channel. Do that, give me a like also, just to help this YouTube algorithm to show my videos for other guys. I would really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. So anyhow, I will plan to do a video about that to see how many kilowatt hours I have lost in the battery when I am charging and uh, discharging the battery. Because you also have to have that in your mind if you are going to do this uh, buying and selling stuff because it sometimes can be more than you think especially if you are working with uh, lower voltages uh, i am having 400 volts in my battery when i use it uh, for normal i can charge it up to 450 and i can take it down all the way down to 370 but normally i will be around 420 and 400 volts so uh, not so much losses in that uh, setup, but if you have a Growatt 48 volt system or even a Victron 48 volt system or 24 volt system, you will of course have more losses because uh, you need to have thicker cables uh, that don't create uh, more losses in itself, but normally you just use a lot of more current to produce the same amount of power and that will also generate some heat. So um, yeah, the higher the voltage, the lesser the losses. I don't know if you can say so, but you maybe know what I mean anyway. anyway. So yeah, there we have it. A lot of talking, a lot of calculations. And uh, yeah, let's look at the numbers here, by the way. I earned 1,814 crowns to those kilowatt hours that I was exporting. And if we now do some calculations to see how much I was saving uh, by using all the energy myself there, I was saving uh, 2,811 crowns. And then in total, I was able to save 4,625 Swedish crowns during this period here, June, July and August. So that's not so much at all, but that's also the cheapest month during a year. So uh, yeah, it's honest. And uh, this is what it is now when the energy prices are mostly on the negative side, almost. Anyhow, guys, 
a lot of talking here and I know that I am not the best on my English, but I hope you enjoyed anyway. Thank you so much for watching this one. As I said earlier, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up or a comment, do whatever you want. <laughs> but I really hope that I see you next time. Take care and good job. <laughs> Take care and goodbye, guys. <laughs>